Okay, this is about nuts and bolts of uh, SCADA data acquisition systems. Plenty of information here and um, a quick uh, run through uh, presented by Steve Mackay and myself. And um, you have been sharing at the Engineering Institute of Technology. Um, quite a bit of material here. I just want to look at really background to SCADA and data acquisition. Uh, typical SCADA and data acquisition communication structures and then a few troubleshooting techniques. Um, we run these every few weeks and hopefully give you some useful information. There's about 50 slides here, so I'm not going to be able to go through all the material, but I'll go through the key um, areas. SCADA is supervisory control and data acquisition, um, and also is overlaps with data acquisition systems, so it's typical SCADA system. A remote terminal units or a data logger is the actual um, device that collects data and does control. Could be a PLC or a program or logic controller. Typical SCADA system is listed here in this um, diagram here. Um, you can see the critical thing is your RTU is scattered out in the field doing your data acquisition over a radio link, um, some sort of communication link. It used to be RS232, but RS485 would probably be the main game now. And it's got a um, database. Um, various types of networks, Ethernet, industrial Ethernet um, is used. Um, the software that you use um, varies quite dramatically. You have packages such as SciTech, Wonderware, uh, Rockwell packages, InTouch. Um, key features are listed here. It's basically alarms, your graphic displays, trends. And obviously, um, ability to handle a lot of uh, failure of the system. So, typically, here's a typical example of a system uh, where you've got all your database up here, residing on the server, and these display nodes then acquire this information from the server and they interface through a bridge or some sort of connecting device switch or a router to your RTUs scattered around here, which are often PLCs, programmable logic controllers. Um, typical protocols and standards used are 232, which has probably been surpassed nowadays, RS485, Modbus, and obviously BMP3 protocol. These, by the way, are interface standards. They're not protocols as such. Um, not going to worry about 232. It's a typical example of a breakout box. Um, 485 is probably the key thing. This is a balanced standard, so it's got an extremely good noise humidity. Go up to a kilometer, 10 megabits per second. Not up to a kilometer, but up to a few meters. 32 transmitters and receivers on the system. Uh, very resistant to noise, so very good quality. Um, used for property bus, for example, and um, a lot of RTUs and data acquisition units use 485. That's a typical example. One of the issues here is to actually put in termination resistance to prevent reflection. And also the other issue is ensure your ground is um, properly to avoid common low voltage problems. Here's a four-wire network. Um, obviously has a Think about minimizing noise. Modbus is a very common protocol used, extremely common, common address field, function field, read, write, analog or digital, data field, and then error check field, which is a CRC 16 check. Um, and then obviously, typical things. BMP3 is a very popular protocol used, supposedly to replace Modbus, and certainly for. Wide area networks, the MP3 is very good. Uh, my bus will probably be more for um, plants and stuff like that. Um, so, time stamping, which you've got in BMP3, not so much in the um, um, my bus use of bandwidth, reporting by exception, which means when changes occur, my bus is not very good at handling those sort of issues. Um, and the other thing about DMP3 is an open protocol, optimized for scalar communications. A whole lot of different features of DMP3. 
troubleshooting and maintenance, a few topics here. Um, really, when troubleshooting, don't remove components online. Because you may have a problem with failure of components. And uh, the antennas, make sure that your dummy load is installed, otherwise you may have a problem with the client client. Typical components here need to be checked, your analog inputs, digital inputs, uh, the ITU. I'm um, not going to worry too much about that. Um, operator station software, um, look for typical network cards, and obviously other things are the bridge or switch. Um, these are some typical problems here, operator terminal locks up intermittently and you've got a drop-off in a dramatic amount, you could find issues with uh, noise interference causing those sort of problems. Um, and there's a few discussions there about maintenance as well, which I'm not going to worry about. Okay, so any questions, please send them through to me at Steve Lakai at the Engineering Institute of Technology. Thank you very much for tuning in.